this job is only temporary. You are not doing this forever. Why would I even be grateful for this? Like, I don't obviously want to do it. It's not who I am. It's not my career path. It's not me. One, two, three, let's switch this up. Hi, my little honeys. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new, my name is Anastasia, also known as your fave social media girl. I am an actor based here in Toronto. I make YouTube videos about acting, self-love, body positivity, and of course, occasional vlogs. If you haven't done so already, please don't forget to subscribe. It would really, really, really help me out. And of course, don't forget to turn on the bell notification button so you know every single time that I post, which is on. We're gonna talk about the jobs that you work, that you really don't wanna work, and how to make them work for you. This can pertain to anybody. I'm not just talking about like, oh, you're an actor, you're in the industry, and then you serve or do a side hustle or whatever. This can be anybody. Like, you're in school to be a lawyer, but you have to work the jobs to obviously pay off school or just not even pay off school, just make a living to pay your rent and everything else in between. Sometimes it can feel that those jobs are literally the number one thing that is in your life. And I get you, I feel you honeys, I'm literally in that exact same position because, so I'm an actor, if we have not obviously already known that, but with acting, there's no guarantee that all the time, every job I'm gonna book means that I am gonna be financially fine. So I serve and basically I really don't like serving. And I had a really hard time with it because I've been trying to figure out how can I make serving work for me because financially, I'm fully dependent on it, but I'm not dependent emotionally, mentally. And it took me a while to get myself to the point where I don't like serving, I don't like going, but I found a way to enjoy it, I found a way to work with it, where I'm actually able to decently have a good time, and I kind of created myself like boundaries and tips, where it helps me, and I hope, honeys, these tips that I have for you are going to help you, where you're going to not love, but you're going to tolerate and enjoy the side hustles that you're doing, that you just really don't want to be doing. So, let's get into it. One of the things that really helped me to kind of start off with the whole like, okay, I serve, I don't want to do it. How can I make this like, okay for me is I had to find the gratefulness within that job. And this was the hardest thing for me to do because I'm like, why would I be grateful for serving? I don't want to do it. I hate it. I don't like the people that I work. Uh, people that I serve are mean and kind of stupid and like just ignorant there's so much drama within work all the time managers i like i don't understand what's a, what is it with restaurant managers or just managers in the service industry in general like i feel like every single time i go to a serving job i'm like there is always an idiot manager i don't understand how that works and I, that's why i was like how can i find grateful for this like why would i even be grateful for this like i don't obviously want to do it so the gratefulness is important because it really allows you to sit here and really try to find the pros within the job so I sat down and I wrote it out. I was like, obviously I have a lot of cons, but we're not gonna write out the cons. We're gonna write strictly out only just the pros. And the first thing is, is that I'm making money. Like I'm literally able to sustain a downtown Toronto apartment because of this job. I'm able to pay my editor every week to help me edit my YouTube videos because of my job. I bought my beautiful camera that I've been vlogging on for what, a year now because of my job. My acting classes, my acting headshots, like, Everything that I do comes financially from this job. So yes, I'm grateful that the money that I make is really good money and I'm able to sustain myself with it and do the things that I love and essentially build my portfolio, build myself to what I want to get to, to be a successful actor, a successful YouTuber. And having that gratefulness really allows me to sort of come into work with a different energy. What I like to do is I like to point out to myself that I'm like, it could be a lot worse. I could be working at a very, very horrible job and be making trash money and just not feeling safe or comfortable at my job. So it could be worse. And I like to kind of put it in that sort of sense. Remind yourself that this is only temporary. I literally tell myself this every single time before I go into a shift, before I clock my little key card and open the door, I say to myself, Anna, this job is only temporary. You are not doing this forever. 
You probably are gonna do this for another year, max, and then your career is gonna kick off. Let's go. I got myself a point, even after COVID, where I got myself looped around in a hole where I got really freaked out because I was like, oh my God, like, I don't want to be a server for the rest of my life. I don't want to be the artist that, you know, does the auditions, maybe books, maybe doesn't book, but then my entire hustle is the serving every day. And I just have to keep reminding myself, this is not going to happen because this is not a goal that I have. I'm not sitting here like pre COVID. Yeah. If COVID never happened, I could have been that server because all I literally did was wake up, eat, chill out on my phone, have a coffee go to the gym, work out like a crazy person, come back, make my lunch, hang out on my phone again, go to my job at five o'clock, work, come home and sleep. Yeah, if it wasn't for COVID, I probably would have continued being that person and I probably would have been 26 right now, had nothing happened, no YouTube channel, like I would have had no goal or anything in my life. So yes, then that job probably wouldn't have been temporary. But when you have goals and ambition and a plan that you're working towards and you're actively working on it, very, very highly unlikely that you're gonna be stuck at the serving job. Make yourself a plan and follow that plan and I'm telling you, you will be out of that serving job or whatever job it is very, very fast. My personal favorite. Are you dealing with negative, difficult employees? Me too, honeys. I deal with it all the time. And it's sometimes hard. It's very, very difficult. So my advice to those employees and my advice to you to do to those employees is send them love. Send them love. I'm not kidding. Like kill them with love, like kill them with kindness. It literally will help you so much because when you have fire and fire going at each other, what does it create? More fire. So when you have an employee who's like, what are you doing? You shouldn't be doing this. I know better. Ah. And then you take that energy being like, how dare you say that to me? Blah, 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 blah. You're creating this hostile environment that doesn't help you or the other employee or anybody else. And then your manager didn't get involved and it just continues like a snowball effect. Now, if you took it and said, okay, this person is freaking out on me. I'm just going to be like, okay. And literally say to yourself in your head to them, I'm, I'm sending you love. Just literally be a calm cool collected cucumber and just i'm not kidding like really send them love like be kind about it be like really straight from the heart like i'm gonna send you love i'm really sorry that you are hurting and whatever you're doing this you probably hate your life as well and you probably don't want to be here just as much as i do and that's okay like we can bond between that ask them how they're doing as much as it may kill you that you don't want to do it it's okay just come up to them and be like hey how are you today like what's happening you know do you want to do you want to talk do you want a safe space to talk they, I'm, tr I'm telling you they're really gonna appreciate it and they actually might open up to you and your relationship with them might actually you know be a lot better trust me I've, I've been in those positions and it's worked for me it really has for some people it may take time and there are people that choose not to open up to you because they just don't want to and whatever and that's fine but at least you tried and you did it for yourself and at least universally you are trying to put it out there for like the entire environment of work so Kill them with kindness and kill them with love. Catching your hostile negative energy. This is kind of ties into my previous point of killing them with kindness. When I talked about like the fire and fire creates more fire, it's kind of the same sort of vibe. When you already walk in with negative energy, there's very hard for you to flip yourself around and to find the positive at work. Like when I already come into work being like, wow, great, this wasn't done and that wasn't done last night. Oh my God, great. And this is all messy. Oh wow, and I have to do this too? Oh, and look at that, they more made more money than me last night? Well, awesome, I'm probably gonna make shit money tonight. Awesome. You're already downfalling in this like spiral of like negative ball energy. So really try to like not allow the start of your day already happen with that. And then when you are at work, even if you are in a hostile environment, don't add your negative hostileness to the environment. Like really stay calm, stay present, stay open, catch the negative thoughts, take yourself out of it and replace them with positive ones. I say this about self-love in general all the time. And at work, it really is going to help. Somebody just made a, you know, shit comment to you. Just be like, okay, thank you. Amazing. And just like breathe through it. This is 
all about boundaries, okay? You need to send boundaries in every aspect of your life, whether it's with friends, family, relationships, coworkers, like everything around my life has boundaries. And it's the same thing with work. The minute you leave those walls and your shift is done, you do not answer phone calls. You do not answer emails. You do not answer anything that you don't need to answer to. The minute I leave, I turn off my WhatsApp. I turn off that WhatsApp group. I do not look at anything until the day of my actual shift. Then I'll open it up and I'll see because sometimes they'll be like, hey, we got a new wine. We're not using this Pinot Grigio anymore. We're using that Pinot Grigio. These are important things for me to know, obviously, because, well, like, then I'm I'm serving the wrong Pinot Grigio. So set the boundaries for yourself. If you know that you don't work Sundays, don't work Sundays. Don't pick up shifts on Sundays. They need to respect that as well. You're a human being as well and you have a life outside of that job. So the minute you leave those walls, that's it. You're in your personal life. You're doing your own other personal stuff and you focus on that path that you have for yourself, whether that be acting or creative writing or whatever it is, even if it's not a creative job, you get in there and you do your own thing. This is just something that I feel like should be like tattooed into our bodies. I never identify myself as a server, ever. Like I never, ever, ever tell people I'm a server. I'm not embarrassed and I'm not doing it from a place of like, oh, I wanna hide or I wanna don't wanna tell people that I serve. No, not at all. It's because it's not relevant to me. It's not who I am. It's not my career path. I'm not doing this job for the rest of my life. It's not me. I'm an actor and I'm a YouTuber. That's what it is. That's what I identify myself as. When people ask me like, oh, what do you do? I'm like, I'm an actor, I'm a YouTuber. I never tell them that I serve. That's it. If someone actually asks me, then yes, obviously I will tell them, but I never start off the conversation with that. Even when I am serving, I network like a crazy maniac. All I do is network at work. Oh, wow, you're in the industry? Oh, cool, what do you do? Oh, great, well, I'm also an actor, a YouTuber. Pleasure to meet you, like, can we connect? Do you have Instagram? Oh, like, you have a business card? Great, awesome. Anything that I can possibly do, that's what I do. I never, ever, ever continue with the, um, no, I only serve, yeah, well, I occasionally do acting. No, there's no occasional. I do acting, I'm an actor, and I do full-time YouTube, done. They don't have to know if I make money off my YouTube. They don't have to know if I am making money off my acting. That's none of their business. Fake it till you make it, honeys, because that's what you have to do, literally. Fake it till you make it. And I think at work, because I identify so much that I'm an actor YouTuber, I think people kind of back off. Like, once I'm out, like, people know, like, yeah, Anna's doing her own thing. And nobody calls me anymore. Like, nobody asks me to pick up shifts or anything like that. Like, she's here, she's here, but the minute she's out of those walls, She's on her own. Well, these are my six tips that helped me sort of work the jobs and enjoy working the jobs that I don't want to work. I have a really different relationship with serving now than I did like even just a year ago. Even just like six months ago, I really had a horrible relationship with serving. And I'm telling you now that I do these tips and that I really work on it, I actually like attract the right people at work. I attract like a good sort of environment around me. People don't really like screw around with me at work. They know that I don't take shit from people. I attract good money at work. I attract really good tables at work. Like just everything all together, I attract the right sort of environment and the people and it actually makes my life easier. I don't go home angry. I don't bring my work drama to my home and then and then I, you know, I put it out on Mikita, my boyfriend. Like, it doesn't happen. Like, I come home and I'm like, yeah, whatever. There was work drama and it didn't involve me. And it was amazing. And I loved it. I was just kind of on the sidelines, like eating popcorn. And it was great. What is your side hustles? What are your side hustles? And what is one thing that you enjoy about your side hustle? Comment down below. I think this could be the start of you kind of creating your own little tips around your side hustles and starting the gratefulness of that side hustle. But yeah, what's your side hustle? And what is one thing that you enjoy about it the most? I love you, honeys. Don't forget to subscribe. Follow me on Instagram and I will see you all next Friday. Bye, honeys.